Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Data Avenue. In this video, I am going to explain about waterfall model. This is my second video I am publishing in my channel. It's a continuation of previous one. Earlier, I published about uh, basics of STLC, what are the different phases and what are the different models available in the IT industry. In today's video, we are going to see only about waterfall model. So waterfall model is uh, one of the traditional models available in the IT industry for more than a decade. So today what we are going to see is, uh, we are going to see what is waterfall model, why it is called uh, waterfall model, what are the advantages, disadvantages, when to use waterfall model, and what are the other alternatives available in the market. Okay, let's start with the introduction. It's a linear sequential life cycle model composed of six non-overlapping stages. Each phase must be completed before the next phase. So if you look at this diagram here, I mentioned about the STLC phases, starts from the requirements, design, implementation, Next slide, uh, uh, I'll tell you what we do it on the each phases. So here if you see the each phase, there is no overlapping at all. The requirements, once it's completed, will move to the design. Once the design is finalized, we'll go to the implementation. So all these phases are cascaded to each other. You know, if you understand this process well, it's similar to how the water flows from the mountain, right? It's flowing steadily to downwards. So that's why it is called a waterfall model. So each phase, the requirements would be the input for the design and design would be the input for the implementation. So each phase we have to document it, review, get it reviewed, and get a sign off. When I say sign off, usually we'll get it as part of the emails as a proof, then move on to the next phase. Okay. If you look at the history, this is originated in the manufacturing and construction industries. Okay. The industries uh, like the manufacturing and construction industries, uh, uh, they spend a lot of time in the requirements and design once it's finalized there won't be frequent changes during the implementation. So this is the process is being followed in the manufacturing and construction industries. So this is originated from there. So as I said, it's a very traditional model which is there in the IT industry. So when we initially implemented in the IT industry, there was no better alternatives. But today we have uh, uh, few other models which is uh, having much better advantage than the waterfall model. So I'll explain those models in the upcoming slides. So as mentioned, it's a traditional and somewhat old fashioned project management approach. So in this slide, as mentioned, like uh, it has a different phases. It's starting from one to six. So different phases of the water mo waterfall model starting from requirements, system design, implementation, integration and testing, deployment and maintenance. Right. Um, in my previous video itself, I explained about uh, the different phases, what we do. So just I'll highlight it here with a couple of sentences. So the requirements is very important. We have to do the analysis and then uh, discuss and come up with the all possible requirements. The requirements would be documented as part of the requirement specification document. I'm planning to publish uh, a one more video only for specific about requirements, uh, how it differs from uh, what are the different types of requirements are there. Okay, My business requirement, user, functional and non-functional. I'm not going to cover those very detailed explanation here in this particular slide, but I'm just going to 
explain you what's happening in the each phase of it so once the requirement is completed then we'll move into the the design where the overall architecture and required software and hardware would be finalized then that would be handed over to the development team for the coding and implementation so the module is divided into small units and then implemented and testing that's why we call it as a unit testing and fourth stage we have to integrate all the small small modules and then we have to do the end-to-end -end testing and be all ready then we have to go to the the deployment the system would take have the the real-time data that is a production and then the maintenance so if you look at this phases from one to six it's very clean and neat well arranged suppose if we find any kind of a problems or any gaps in the requirements or design during the implementation uh, point number step number three or step number four during the testing we cannot go back immediately and modify it so uh, that is the biggest uh, disadvantage in this particular uh, model so we have to uh, find out what are the other alternatives we can do find out the mitigation plan we have to go with uh, either we have to change the entire plan or we have to park those whatever the gaps we identified for future implementation again we have to go to the step number one from start from the analysis and then come as the different enhancement so that is how the the flow works we cannot just go back from 4 to 3 or 3 to 2 immediately change it and we cannot come back so that is the one of the disadvantages of this particular uh, model so this is a, a sample project plan uh, how it looks so usually we open up the excel and um, you can just mark from start date to end date here i mentioned about uh, the timeline and months usually it would be month and then weekly basis it would be week one week two week three kind of and then if you see it starts from the requirement design development testing and deployment so we, according to this slide uh, the requirement is happening for maybe entire jan and feb and i put up a uh, star over there in the design and uh, deployment phase that means it's a go live date uh, the deployment go live date at uh, the end of september and then the design finalization would be in the end of april and the dev phase i mark some numbers here 443 it's just a uh, uh, additional information that i want to give it here that uh, what is the team size how many developers is going to work according to this four developers would be there in the entire month of may four people would be there in the entire month of june and then uh, since the development activity would be reduced at the end of the phase so i'm reducing one person from this particular uh, phase so this is just a sample to understand how it looks and if you see here there is no overlapping at all you know well arranged here so when to use the STLC model right I covered in a one single slide when to use what are the advantage and disadvantages so as I mentioned previously we have a different phases from one to six if you find out any issues or any gaps during our implementation or testing we cannot just go back to the design phase and modify it and we can just do this right we cannot so that is the biggest advantage, uh, disadvantage in this particular model so when to use this when not to use this so if you look at it the requirements are not changing frequently you know once it's a finalized the requirements so that we can do the better design without changing any requirements and the cycle goes right so where and the project is not too long you know some two years kind of things if a small project 
where requirements are not changing, requirements are very solid, those places we have to use this STLC model. Okay, because the requirements are limited, the time is limited, the scope is very well clear, there is no uh, major changes happening, the technology tools, everything would be uh, will be finalizing very early stage and that, those are the advantages right I mean uh, it's easy to manage all phases are very well organized each phase we have to document we are documenting the results the review commands and status of the review commands and uh, we getting the sign off to move to the next phase so as mentioned the waterfall model works well for the smaller projects where requirements are very well clearly defined. So disadvantages, any issues or any errors gaps identified during implementation or testing that can be fixed within that particular phase if it's out of the I mean anything related with the design or requirement we cannot go back we have to uh, you know start from the analysis again either we have to change the entire plan or we have to park those gaps and take it as an announcement right and uh, this is not a right choice when we have a complex project or where the requirements are changing frequently so what are the better alternatives available other than this waterfall model right so today we have uh, JAD RAD spiral agile the JAD is joint application development where uh, the during the requirement phase uh, not only the business analyst so we involve uh, the entire uh, the POCs of the teams from one person from the development tech lead uh, testing lead and uh, SMEs users right they get into the call and discuss about the requirement that is uh, the joint application development process then very famous in today's world is agile model so I'm planning to publish uh, the next video would be the continuation of this uh, and I'll definitely explain about uh, what is Chad, what is Agile and uh, how the requirements are being captured and derived to the different uh, requirements. So thanks for watching uh, this video. Leave your comments and feedback uh, so that uh, you know upcoming videos I'll uh, take up your topics and uh, come up with the uh, very good examples. So thank you so much.